Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape, creating an illustration with brush effects. At this stage, Inkscape does not have a brush function yet. I'm working with version 1.2 in this video. I'm using a vector shape as a pattern along a path instead. In order to start, let's get an illustration done first. I like to block out my designs with simple shapes like rectangles and circles first. They are a lot quicker to create than using the pen tool and most likely getting lost in detail. Once I have my initial shapes, I go in, convert all of those to editable paths and then use the node tool to start curving, moving and putting the angles in that I like. In this case, adding new shapes and again trying to work with the simple approach first, working with straight lines and curving them after I have the initial shape set. As you might have noticed, I like to duplicate I excessively use the duplicate function rather than draw a new element. I take one that's already on the screen and simply duplicate it, move it to the position I need and scale it to the size I need. As this is not the main part of this video, I did fast forward in the playback. It's really just about getting the initial shape and the background done for the main part, the brush strokes. The idea of creating a wide fishing boat with colored trim doesn't quite work when you place it on a wide background. There's not much to see. So this is a quick background behind the boat so we can actually see the boat a bit better. One of the fastest ways to create shading is by using gradients. So I'll start by adding some gradients to the main shapes to A, create shadows and distinguish the shapes from one another. For the curved part of the hull, a simple gradient would not work. So I'm creating a duplicate shape that is slightly darker and use that as a shadow. I duplicate that shape again, break it up to just have the top line as the colored trim. Another great tool in Inkscape are the clipping groups. I create a colored shape and make the hull a clipping group and place that colored shape inside so it's perfectly trimmed to the shape of the hull. One thing I really love about vector graphics is the ease in which you can create and recycle. Additional elements are created in link of an eye and combined into one pass for easy editing with the pass union. I duplicate the hull and the front to easily create a shadow shape, combine the two by a pass union and give them a slightly darker than the water gradient. And here is the initial boat design in rather plain colors with a few gradients. This is the first stage done. I like to keep things in separate layers. This one will be the first layer, which is my base layer. Then I'll have a separate layer for the pattern. As an illustration becomes more complex, working with named layers makes it faster. You can display or lock them as you need. It may take up a little time initially, but in my opinion, it pays off in the long run. To take away from the very clean look of the vector shape and coloring, I'm creating a grunge shape on top. For that, I duplicate the outer shapes 
the cloud, the water and the one line at the back and combine all them to one shape with pass union. This will be my clipping mask for the pattern that is going to go inside. I prepared a crunch pattern earlier. It's a photo I took of a boulder at the beach. I upped the contrast and took out all the color by changing the situation level. That gives me a pattern that breaks the clean look. I set the silhouette as a clip and the layer blend mode to multiply. That takes out all the white, so we're left with just the black. Next up, I reduce the opacity, so it's just a faint texture on top of the color. I use another duplicate of the silhouette for a clipping group that contains colored overlays. I create simple rectangles in black and wide with a gradient. I place them somewhat randomly on top of the design. Again, it's all about duplicating to speed up the process. Once I created one gradient shape, I just duplicate it and move and scale it. This concludes the second stage of the design process. The initial shapes are built with the colors set and the grunge and additional overlays are in place. Now it's time to add the brush patterns, which is what this video tutorial is all about. The brushes in this example I created in Affinity Designer because of it's easy to use a tapered brush stroke along with the graphic tablet. It is entirely possible to create them in Inkscape as well. It would be a slightly different approach using a tapered stroke as the path effect on the lines. And it's the creation of a seamless tile where only the left and right side need to connect seamlessly. I create a line with the pen tool. It's easier than using the pencil tool as it gives me less notes, which makes it easier to adjust later on. I assign a pass effect to this line, the pattern along pass. This effect requires a path, which is our line, and the pattern which I can select as one of the brush strokes I created earlier and I put them up at the top. I select one and copy it, select my pass again and choose either the paste to pass or the link to pass. Either one assigns my vector shape to the pass and now I can set the repeat by changing that from stretch to repeat. The pattern now gets copied along the line seamlessly put together if the pattern itself is seamless. I can change the fill color and the opacity in the fill panel or assign a different texture by just selecting the pattern, copying it and going back to my pass effect and linking that newly copied pattern. Let's try out a few and see which one works best for the side of the boat. There is a second handle, which if I pull it down, it changes the width of my pattern. Set that back because we want to keep the proportions. I like to adjust the layer blend mode to multiply for darker objects and screen or overlay for lighter ones. That allows a nicer mix of the object's color with the colors below it. I duplicate the line and assign a different pattern to the path effect. 
For the water, I want something that looks more watery. So let's try this one. And again, I link the copy pattern to this effect and change the color to a white. This means I got to alter the blend mode as well because a white shade and a multiply won't show anything. The pattern looks a little small for what I'm after, so I duplicate the pattern and make a larger version, copy that and assign it to the pass effect. The easier way would have been to use the edit on canvas option, which brings up the vector pattern that is assigned to a pass and lets you alter it. As you can see, if I go in with the node tool, I can manipulate single notes and change the whole pattern while I edit it. All I want to do now is just scale it to match the size I need and it scales it in real time so I can see how the pattern looks right away. I use the same pattern in a slightly smaller size further back. And once I have the pattern assigned to the pass, it's easy to just copy the pass and reuse it, change the pattern, assign a different color and fill the design. One problem when you use with patterns like this is extreme curves. If I create something for the clouds here and put in the edge pattern, you can see that it does deform. You might have to go in with the node tool and make some of those curves a tad smoother if your pattern deforms too much. You can also assign transparent gradients to the pattern. I did that with the pattern in the sky. Just shade it from the top down. I duplicated the two curves and added another pattern on top. It's as simple as selecting the new pattern, copying it and assigning it to the pass in the pass effect panel. I quickly adjust the size in the center with the edit on canvas to make those lines a little bigger. When you have a pattern like the vertical lines, they do align seamlessly but you need to create a little gap between them, otherwise they would have the left and the right line attached to each other. You can do that by altering the spacing in the pattern long pass panel. I changed my mind on the lines, so I take them off again, add a different pattern to those clouds and just continue working my way through the design, seeing where I can add more patterns duplicate what I have that would look good somewhere else. The sky could do with a little bit more so I duplicate that and just change the curve as I go along and the pattern on the pass will be adjusted accordingly. For this video I'm roughly placing the lines on top of the design using one clipping mask only which is the whole silhouette. If you want these patterns to be trimmed more precisely you would clip them to the shape that they belong to. For example, the pattern on the hull would be inside a clipping group we created earlier for the shadow.
Even though Inkscape does not have a dedicated brush tool like Affinity Designer or Adobe Illustrator, I think this workflow has some potential. I will definitely continue to play around with it and hopefully record a video pretty soon that will show you how to create a pattern that matches the left and the right size in order to be used for this purpose. For now I'm calling this design done. I hope I got the idea across how to use vector shapes as patterns that look like brush effects in an escape. I created a few examples in Finished Designer that can be easily replicated in Inkscape using the technique in this video. They consist of simple shapes, colors and gradients with the brush pattern placed on top which can be done with the pattern along the path in Inkscape. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, let me know in a comment below what you want to see on my channel or on my blog next, and I will see you again soon.